since the last time we spoke, uh, oh, what so are developments in the alternative data space versus the last year's conference discussions? Of course. Well, alternative data talks only a year ago were mostly a conversation between uh, active data buyers on the buy side, like quant funds, and data providers, data vendors. So it was like a very closed community of people who actually understood what all the specifics of alternative data were. This year, I see a lot of allocators, a lot of hedge fund investors, which makes a lot of sense because now they realize that uh, regardless of the strategy, almost every investment manager now has or is going to have at least some exposure to the product of big data analytics, predictive analytics, artificial intelligence, and so on. And while they have this exposure, so do their investors and so do their allocators. So it is essential to understand how to evaluate data strategy of the investment management, of the investment managers. And so now, um, alternative data investors, institutional investors and allocators actually want to know more and want to be involved in the conversation about alternative data. Great. A lot's going on, as they said in the movie, right? <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? How should investors uh, allocate this approach? Uh, would be how, do sh how should they evaluate investment managers' data strategy? Well, first of all, they should ask questions about this strategy. Does the manager even have this, uh, the policy written down about how they um, source data and how they use alternative data and traditional data for that matter? Uh, depending on whether the investment manager has the internal uh, capabilities to collect data and process data or they buy it from a third party vendors, the question should be different. From third party vendors, you have to question the quality of the data and how the manager uh, actually verifies that quality mm -hmm. because uh, ultimately the investor gets the exposure to the quality of data, right? Um, obviously, the investment manager has the capabilities to do everything in house. So the question is, what is the process and how robust is this process? Another important thing is to see the exposure to one specific data source. It's the same thing as the concentration of, of, uh, on certain investment or a certain sector. If an investment manager has a, a lot of, uh, has a, a huge concentration on just one or two data sources, the question is what's going to happen if this data source goes out of business or some regulatory changes makes it difficult to collect this data, right? So is there is it, That's the question to the investment manager. Ideally, the investment manager has to have a replacement in mind for that data source. So it's sort of like part of the contingency plan. Mm -hmm. And those are important questions to be asked during due diligence investment, due diligence interview. And let's move on to our third question. Uh, ML-driven funds, what are their perspectives? Uh, are they going to become a component of alpha portfolios in institutional investors? I do think so. Um, definitely machine learning driven, like purely machine learning driven hedge funds are now rare. If, uh, although I did look up uh, uh, some statistics and only one hedge fund database, frequent database, they tracked around 300 of such funds, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of implies there are more of those. And, and I think there will be more of these funds. And I think it's important for for uh, allocators to start thinking about this funds in terms of due diligence, in terms of manager selection. And what's interesting, um, a lot of allocators think about machine learning driven funds as a quant funds and put them in a quant bucket, mm -hmm. which I don't think is the right thing to do because uh, machine learning actually replicates the human learning process and resemble human learning much more and much closer than quant strategies that are typically rule-based strategies. On the other hand, obviously, it's heavily quantitative in terms of the process and it's much more likely to be produced by a quant team than a discretionary team. So I, I think machine learning funds should be like a separate group of funds and the approach to due diligence and manager selection in this, uh, in this type of funds should be different. Well, maybe the last question is a little bit outside of the scope, but what about what they call the sentiment? The, the, the market sentiment, market uh, which, sentiment. Is, which, which is a strictly human uh, mm -hmm. feature. And uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? 
Uh, I'm not sure what I mean uh, about strictly human feature because mm -hmm. sentiment is actually one of the most popular sources uh, in the world of alternative data. It's actually very quantifiable and a lot of uh, machine learning funds do uh, use um, uh, market sentiment. Yeah, 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 market sentiment um, as a source of alpha. But like I said, is any source of alpha, it is, there's a risk of concentration. Because uh, theoretically, you can build the entire investment strategy just based on sentiment analysis. And there are a lot of different approaches to sentiment analysis, a lot of different approaches to natural language processing, to like selecting underlying sources of this data. And so it's, it's absolutely doable. The question is whether or not you want to be exposed to basically just one type of data. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that concludes our little interview. Thank you so much, Olga. Thank Very you. insightful. Pleasure to talk to you.